Okay, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Barsham, Yahweh Shai, Barsham, Rakah, Kadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in the times that we're living in. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, have given us this insight to give us the stability of mind. And this is pursuant to Isaiah 33 and 6. Because all hell is about to break loose out here. And the Heavenly Father have given us this knowledge to calm our minds and to give us certain direction when all hell breaks loose, which is which will be the judgment of the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son upon this world for its wickedness. Remember Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, so the wicked is ruling the planet earth right now. So there will be a mighty judgment brought forth by the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son. And the Heavenly Father has given us this knowledge to calm our minds in that time. This knowledge will give us direction in that time. Plus, we expect to be saved by Yahweh Shai, the Savior, when that time comes, you know, when Yahweh Shai comes back <coughs> in those so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, to deliver his elect. Now, speaking of his elect, the name of this video will be called Nepotism. 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 And for those of you that don't know what nepotism is, is the definition. It says the practice among those with power or influence of favoring relatives or friends, especially by giving them jobs. One more time. The practice among those with power or influence of favoring relatives or friends, especially by giving them jobs. So how does that apply to this, this truth, this knowledge, this ministry? Well, you will find out that the members of the elect are really chosen through nepotism. That being that they are friends and relatives of Yahweh Shai. Because it starts with Yahweh Shai. The, the elect, the head of the elect starts with Yahweh Shai. So... In reality, the members that's chosen to be the elect, the body of the elect, which starts with Yahweh Shai, in reality, they are friends and relatives of Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start with the first scripture. So the practice among those with power or influence, who would that be? The Heavenly Father Yahweh and His Son Yahweh Shai of favoring relatives or friends especially by giving them jobs so you know we've been given the job to herald the coming of Yahweh Shai we've been given the job of raising up the nation of Israel beginning with the elect the house of David remember the the elect the house of David uh, they're, they're the uh, you know they're the chosen line that are closely related relatives and friends of Yahweh Shai. I mean, I can't make it any plainer. Hopefully this video is edifying. Hopefully you understand what I'm saying. One more time. The elect, in reality, spiritually that is, they're close relatives and friends of Yahweh Shai. Even more so, close relatives. Okay? Because, well, really friends too, because the word friend is from the uh, Latin meaning brother. When you go into the word friend, um, in the Latin, it's fratello, fratello. Fratello is brother, also in the Italian, and fratelli is brothers. Fratello, fratelli, okay? And that's where you get the word friend from. A lot of people don't know that. So in reality, the uh, elect are really close relatives of Yahweh Shai. Okay? 
And that is the very act of nepotism. You see? So let's go into the scriptures and prove it. Now, first let's start with the disciples. Yahweh Shai called them friends. In other words, brothers. In other words, you guys are related to me. Somewhere down the line, their family line, they're closely related to Yahweh Shai. I mean, that's just the best way I can explain it. So when you check it out, those of us that are coming in the truth, that are certainly members of the elect, somewhere down the line, we're related. Our families are related. Closely related. Okay? This is the book of... Uh, let me see. Oh, that's a good one. Luke 15. But I want to get the one. I think it's in Luke... Well, here's a couple here. Let's read this uh, John, John 15 and 13. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life. Who is this man? Yahweh Shai for his friends. Now, again, a lot of people don't notice the word friend when you go into the etymology of the word fratello, which means brother. Fratelli means brothers. Uh, John 15 and 14, ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you, which by default would make you a member of the elect. Now, here's the scripture that I was thinking about. Uh, John 15, well, let's start at 14. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. So we're really, we're, those of us that are close to Yahushai, closely related to him, relatives of him, as it were, we're really more than servants. We're actually friends, which friends, the word friends mean brothers, fratelli. Henceforth I call you not friends, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. Who's our Lord? Yahweh Shai. And we know what he's doing because he's revealed it unto us. Why? Because we're, we're related to him. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. So we're closely related to Yahweh Shai. All right? And that's spiritually, of course. Like case in point, there was a reason why Apostle Peter was chosen to be the head. Apostle Peter was, in his past life, was closely related to Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, Apostle Peter, in his past life, was King David. Now, King David was the father of who? Solomon. Solomon was Yahweh Shai. Nepotism. Okay? Nepotism. And even in the world, uh, nepotism is employed in the world okay among the East Indians the ones that have influence and power they tend to hire who fellow East Indians as themselves the same thing with the so called Italians even in the mob I'll give you an example um, you had um, this individual Carlo Gambino all right, Carlo Gambino, who was head of the Gambino family, right? Mob boss, head of the Gambino family. Now, when he knew he was about to die, he chose his, his successor, uh, Paul Castellano. Paul Castellano. Now, Paul Castellano was, I believe, first cousins, or first cousin, rather, to Carlo Gambino. So there's the nepotism. They were closely related. They were both so-called Sicilian. 
All right, so that's why he was chosen. Now, everybody thought that Carlo Gambino was going to choose Nino Della Croce. You know, all the soldiers thought Nino Della Croce was going to be the next guy to take over. But Nino Della Croce was passed over for Carlo Gambino. I'm sorry, for um, Paul Castellano. Let me say that again. Uh, um, Nino Della Croce was passed over for Paul Castellano by Carlo Gambino. When he announced who his successor would be, everybody thought it would be Nino Della Croce, especially John Gotti. He wanted Nino Della Croce to be next in line. And when Nino Della Croce was passed over for, for Paul Castellano, John Gotti was pissed off. And, you know, John Gotti never liked uh, uh, Paul Castellano. And the rest is history, if you know that mob history stuff. So that is the very idea of nepotism. You tend to choose the people that you are related to, that you're close to. You tend to choose those people if you're in a powerful position. You want people around you that you are either related to or close to. That is nepotism. So it, it works the same way in the truth. Believe it or not. <laughs> All right. And I'm giving you some examples according to scripture. You can't get around scripture. So this is John 15 and 15 again. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends, brothers, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. So we're, we're closely related to Yahweh Shai. We're like practically related, you know, inside joke. Some of you may know where that, where that, that uh, line came from, what movie it came from. Let's look up the word friends, the etymology of the word. Let's go to the etymology online. We're going to look up the word friend. Because that's what we do here at Great Millstone. We look, we look up our words. We go in deep. You know, people use words and they have no idea what the word means. Oh, this is heavy. One attached to another by feelings of personal regard and preference. You always prefer your family line to uh, to be in a position of power just like yourself. You always prefer those that are close to you or related to you. It's the same thing with the, the international banking families. You know, since they've been in rulership, they've always preferred their own kind. Their close relatives or family or, or friends to be in powerful positions as themselves. And really, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just, <laughs> if anything, that's just common sense. You don't want to bring in no stranger. Because the stranger might just ruin the business. You want to put people that you know, people that, even better, people that are closely related to you. If you're in a power, uh, position of power bear with me for a minute I want to get the uh, okay I want to get the um, Latin form of the word friend I may just have to type it in okay Latin form of the word friend. I remember seeing it 
a while back the true definition of the word friend. try this Okay, this is from uh, Theosaurus Plus. It says, words, brother and friend, have similar meaning. So we're getting, we're getting warm. Okay, we're getting hot. Let's, let's click on that, see what that says. The reason why they have similar meanings is because the word friend actually means brother. When you go back to the root word, the etymology of the word. Let me go to the uh, down here. It says, uh, "Friend is a synonym for brother in love." Topic. In some cases, you can use friend instead of a noun, brother, when it comes to topics like colleague. Yeah, colleague. Another word. Um. Let me go to Cambridge Dictionary. Cambridge Dictionary and look up the word brother. Cambridge. There we go. We're gonna type in the word friend, see what see what comes up. say too much but you can do your own research on the word friend you know in the in the uh, Latin the word there means brother okay so going back to John 15 we are really Yahweh Shai's brothers okay Let's go to the NLT version. Okay, it uses the same word, friends.
All right, so let's go to the next scripture, the book of Jeremiah, the third chapter. So in reality, the members of the elect, they're closely related to each other. Okay, they're really family. One big family. So, and we're all closely related to Yahweh Shai, who is the head of the family. So, that's the very idea of nepotism. Uh, Jeremiah, the third chapter. Now, after I read the scripture, you're going to see what I'm, what I'm saying. This is one of the scriptures that came to mind when I was putting, putting together this lesson in my mind. Jeremiah, the third chapter, the 14th verse. It says, turn, O backsliding children. So who are the first ones to turn? The elect, the elect of the nation of Israel. They're the first ones to turn, right? Turn back to the heavenly father, Yahweh, through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. So it says, Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, joined. Again, another, uh, you know, another word people don't know the meaning of married. They hear the word married, they think of the big wedding, the woman wearing the white dress, and, and the man wearing that penguin suit, <laughs> looking like a penguin. And uh, he's walking down the aisle with his lady love and there's rice being tossed and they're playing that stupid song, Here Comes the Bride. You know, all that madness. That's not marriage, man. The word married just means joined together. Real marriage is when a man and woman have sex. They're joined together. They join, they become one flesh. In the heat of passion, they become one flesh. That is the very idea of married or marriage in the true sense of the word it means joined together a man and woman are joined together by what the act of sex again people use words and they don't know the meaning of words that's why there's so much ignorance in this world okay and that goes back to isaiah the 60th chapter the first verse gross darkness to people meaning ignorance anyway jeremiah 3 and 14 turn O backsliding children saith the lord for I am married unto you. I, the, the Heavenly Father is joined unto us through His only begotten Son. So wait a minute. A, a family is joined together. They have close bond. They have a close bond. They have close ties. Like, like, the, like the saying, family ties. Okay? So in reality, we're a family. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family even now we have brothers in, in the faith that you know you have a family and two of the members are biological brothers and they they come into the faith i'm thinking of a as a brother from uh from texas all right his uh his brother then they're both of the same father i believe they could correct me if i'm wrong They've been both called into the truth. Just like the scripture says, hey, I will call you one of a city and two of a family. You know, in the different camps that we have in Great Millstone, there are many examples of that. A brother and his biological brother have been both called into the ministry. Okay? Two of a family. So what is that? That's, that's nepotism. That's the very definition of nepotism right there. Let's read it again. Jeremiah 3 and 14. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Because ultimately, that's where we're going back to. We, Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy. As a matter of fact, let's get it. Because that's, that's our destination. Our destination is go back to our land, the land of Israel, the hell of America. Man, America is cursed, man. America used to be beautiful when the so-called North American Indians had it. This used to be a beautiful land. And when Esau came over here and put his his beastly foot over here, his, his dirty, filthy, beastly foot over here, he destroyed this land. 
Now nah, it's a curse. America is a curse. Well, the word America means bitter. So it's nothing but a curse. It's a cursed land. That's why you have something called passport brothers. <laughs> what they leave in America and they're going to different parts of the world to find their lady love. Because America, in reality, America is a cursed land. And we're under a series of curses here in this land. Pursuant to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. As soon as you get out of America, man, you start, you can breathe, actually breathe the air. <laughs> you can breathe as soon as you get out of America. We know this to be a fact because when Apostle Taha and myself and Apostle Ricard, when we went to Canada, man, Canada, we went to Canada, you can feel the difference. All right. And, and Canada and America, they, they share the same landmass, North America. Canada and America, they share the same landmass, North America. But Canada is actually more blessed than America is. Okay? And, and when we went there, this was in the mid-90s, 1990s, when we went there, the, the air was seemed better. The food, what I do remember, the food was a whole lot better than it was in America. You could taste Man, we went to this, I forgot, the pasta knows the restaurant we went to. It was a fast food joint in Canada. And we had, I remember we ordered a burger or something like that. And the, man, the burger tastes way better than what it did in America at that time. You could tell it was real meat. It just had a way better taste to it. All right. The food is better outside of America, absolutely, man, okay, uh, the brother from, um, England, uh, the brother Ramar, okay, he's a beautiful brother, you know, I've met that brother, as a matter of fact, he stayed at my crib, Ramar, uh, um, he came over here to America, and he, you know, he, I don't, I don't know what food he ordered, but the food made him sick. And he actually vomited, I believe he vomited that food up. Because in Europe, the food is way better than it is in America. Okay, in the Europe. So in reality, America is a curse, man. It's a curse. And I'm, t I'm, I'm telling you, if it wasn't for this, this, this knowledge, this truth, and the fact that I'm part of the camp that I'm in, I would have been out of America a long time ago because I'm not from here anyway, okay? A long time ago. America is a curse, man. That's the bottom line. This place is a curse. And it must and will be destroyed. Absolutely. When Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to wipe this place off the face of the earth. Okay? When the Lord get through with it, it's going to be a desert, a big, vast desert. The forbidden, the, the forbidden zone. You know, like in the movie uh, Planet of the Apes. That's what. It, that's the future of America, the forbidden zone. And we're going back to where Israel, our land, the, the blessed land, the the the, uh, the chosen land of the planet Earth, the land of Israel. Okay, plus Israel is going to be uh, burnt too. But the difference is one land is going to remain a desert. One land is going to be beautified. The land that's going to remain a desert will be America. The land that's going to be beautified will be uh, Israel. And that's pursuant to uh, one scripture that comes to mind. is I, I think it's Isaiah the 35th chapter. Let's go there real quick. So our land Israel is going to be, is going to be beautified. That's why it has to be burnt because it has to be purified. All right. Isaiah the 35th chapter. It is right here. Uh, the first and second verse the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. That's the land of Israel. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Wait a minute. That didn't happen in 1948. You had something called, they don't tell you about this, you had something called the kibbutz, Google that, the kibbutz, where they had to bring in trees and grass and 
vegetation they had to bring it into the land of Israel because basically it was a desert the land of Israel because you got vermin living there that's why they got to be burnt out of there <laughs> then the land is going to be beautiful like it once was during the time of uh, Adam and Eve it was it was known as the Garden of Eden the Garden of Eden was actually Palestine man Eden the Hebrew word Eden the Hebrew word for Eden is Idan, which means joy or paradise, which is the earth. And the garden was Palestine, the land of Israel. It was known as the Garden of Eden. Okay, Eden means earth, joy, paradise, which is the earth. So the garden was the land of Israel, in particular Palestine. Okay, so the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. That's the future of the land of Israel. When we go back there, it shall blossom and it shall blossom abundantly, and rejoice even with joy and singing. Ain't no joy and singing over there in the in the land of Israel, man. But the so-called Jews fighting the so-called Arabs back and forth, bombings and shit. Okay, <laughs> there's no rejoicing over there. <laughs> so that's another clue that lets you know the small hatters are not the people like your boy Kanye West been saying <laughs> well actually he says we're Jews too <laughs> Kanye West it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing the glory of Lebanon shall be given to it wait, wait a minute what's the glory uh, uh, what is the glory of uh, Lebanon trees Lebanon was known for its trees so Israel is going to be beautified with trees once again lots and lots and lots of trees producing all kinds of fruit man we just pick the fruit right off the tree and eat it no pesticides no roundup none of that garbage oh that's going to be a glorious day when Yahweh comes and puts his foot right up the so-called white man's ass that's going to be a glorious day glorious day man we'll be able to live because we've never lived we've just existed we'll really be able to live in the kingdom man and you got these these jakes who want to fight for this man's kingdom as if they're living they don't know what the meaning of living is they're just existing in this in this shithole all you can do is exist now in our kingdom we're going to live we're going to know what it means to live and I'm reading you a clue right here. Isaiah 35 and 2. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Neb Lebanon shall be given unto it. That's the trees. And the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our power. Absolutely. When he beautifies the land of Israel. And at the same time America is going to be lying waste. It's going to be on fire smoke is going to be coming up from america <laughs> and then when the smoke and the fire dies down <clears throat> it's going to be a desert the forbidden zone okay that's the future of america your beloved america how about that so isaiah 14 and 1 for the lord will have mercy on jacob and will yet choose israel let's begin with the elect and set them in their own land which is the land of israel after it's beautified and the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of jacob why because they are family members nepotism and ultimately the lord is dealing with one big family the family of the nation of israel nepotism can't get around it man so anyway back to jeremiah 3 and 14 turn on backsliding children say of the lord for i am married unto you and i will take you one of a city and two of a family and I will bring you to Zion. Nepotism. The members of the elect are close family members. Even dealing with Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai had two. Let's get Yahweh Shai's brothers. He had two brothers that was in the faith and two that was not. First, let's get the scriptures. That goes into that let 
it is right here this is the book of uh, Matthew 13 and 55 is not this the carpenter's son that's Yahweh Shai the carpenter being his father Joseph is not his mother Mary is not his mother called Mary and his brethren his brothers James and Joses and Simon and Judas or Jude now James and Jude were both in the ministry they were both part of the original 12 disciples which became apostles that Yahweh Shai chose minus Judas Iscariot of course this Judas here was Jude the same one who wrote the book of Jude and James was the same one who wrote the book of James they were both they were Yahweh Shai's biological brother of the same father Joseph they both wrote books James wrote his book and Jude wrote his book James the Lord's brother let's get that difficult James okay I think it's somewhere in Galatians it, re it refers to Apostle Paul when he went to Jerusalem it is right here Galatians the first chapter this this was a letter written by the Apostle Paul to to the Israelites in Galatia Galatians 1 and 18 then after three years I went this is the Apostle Paul speaking then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days who is this Peter the, the head apostle this is long after the death and resurrection of Yahweh Shai so Peter being the head apostle Paul went to see him and, and he lived with him for 15 days but other of the apostles so I none save James right James the Lord's brother what Lord Yahweh Shai so James was Yahweh Shai's biological brother nepotism and he was chosen to be part of the original 12 that's the very definition of nepotism right there they were actually biological brothers James and the Lord Yahweh Shai Okay, so I'm making the point. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now, Jude was brother to James. So what does that make Jude? That makes Jude Yahweh Shai's brother as well. And he was chosen to be one of the twelve. Here it is right here. Jude, the first chapter, the first verse. Jude the servant of Yahweh Shai, but not only was Jude the servant of Yahweh Shai, he was actually Yahweh Shai's biological brother. Now let that wrap around your melon. Jude, the servant of Yahweh Shai, and brother of James, the same James that the Apostle Paul said he saw when he went to Jerusalem. He didn't see any of the uh, uh, remaining apostles except James which was the Lord's brother. Now Jude was brother to James. Okay? And that goes back to the scripture, Jeremiah 3 and 14. I will take you one of a city and what? Two of a family. So even in Yahweh Shai's family, two was taken. Uh, James and Jude. So how powerful is that? And that is the very definition of nepotism. Okay? Jude, the servant of Yahweh Shai, and brother of James to them that are sanctified by Yahweh the Father and preserved in Yahweh Shai and called okay 
mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied yeah among the brotherhood so literally it is a brotherhood so when we say the brotherhood that's just an understatement <laughs> all right we truly are a brotherhood we are truly related we are close relatives and friends which the word friend means brother so don't, so it's really all in the family so that's that's what i'm going to call this video ne nepotism it's all in the family nepotism it's all in the family that's what i'm gonna call this video and speaking of this video i've made the point hopefully you were edified if you were drop a line in the comment section and it's on to the next one